All right, so the next step is to connect Cubase to your hardware device. In this case, the UR series devices. So you have to configure some things in Cubase. Um, I'm going to assume that you already have your software set up and installed and all your firmware installed, whatever is necessary. Um, so now you go into Cubase, you go under devices and you go under the device setup at the bottom here and it brings up a whole uh, schwack of device setup options. Now we're worried about these two things right here, the VST audio system and then the particular driver configuration. So whichever driver you have selected as the VST audio system, um, there's going to be further configuration for that particular driver. So we'll get to this in a second here. So there's a drop down menu here for your as your driver, you're picking between different options. Um, in my case, I have two hardware devices, the Sapphire Pro 40 and the UR22. And they both have dedicated software that come with the hardware devices. For the Sapphire Pro 40, it is the um, the Sapphire Mix Control software uh, down here, which is under the ASIO Sapphire driver. That's what it is. Um, for the UR22, I have this software, the Yamaha Steinberg software, which is under the Yamaha Steinberg USB ASIO driver. So that's the one that I want to be selected under. Now, um, there are different types of things. So there's one called ASIO for all. It's a freeware kind of setup thing where you can connect multiple devices and use them at the same time. You cannot do that under um, using this driver, the other driver, or the generic or the direct X. These things don't allow for different hardware devices to be utilized at the same time. The ASIO for all one is specifically designed so that you can do that. Now there are also the other types of things. So like this generic low latency one, what that one allows you to do, and I'll open up its kind of software configuration thing, is it allows you to set up um, all of these different things. So like the same way that I'm setting up the Yamaha um, kind of settings, I can do those same kinds of things but under the generic low latency as your driver. So I can switch between inputs and outputs of different hardware devices that are connected. So I can, if I had my ASIO, or my Sapphire Pro 40 connected, I could switch between outputs um, using the Sapphire outputs or any other outputs. I can use the inputs of any inputs and I can mix and match using only one or the other. But this allows you to use more options than you would otherwise. So like I can use my microphone on my um, my webcam, uh, which is right here, I believe. And you can use virtual um, uh, virtual inputs and outputs and stuff. So like my Minicam software and my Wirecast software shows up here because I can use those virtual ones um, under this generic low latency device. So it seems like maybe you should just be using that, but the unfortunate thing about this is it's less stable, especially when you compare it to the specific software and driver that comes with the device that you're trying to use. So because I'm using the outputs and the inputs on this UR22, I'm going to stick with the Yamaha uh, Steinberg driver. Now, there are other important things in this kind of menu thing that are related to the connectivity and whatnot and playback. So this button right here, this release driver when application is in background. If Cubase is not in the forefront of kind of this Windows thing here, 
if it's minimized or if there are other important devices. So like um, if I have Adobe Premiere open, that uses the ASIO driver as well, the audio driver. So if that was in the forefront and I had this clicked, that means that the audio driver is going to be released. It's going to be decoupled from Cubase until Cubase comes into the forefront, at which point it is then going to be reconnected. So there are specific instances where you might want to have this selected. Under normal circumstances, like how I have set up, I'm not running two programs at the same time, and I don't need both of them to at one point in time have the connectivity and at another point not be connected so i leave that unchecked now this little space here has a bunch of information it's kind of measuring the latency in these three little departments the input latency the output latency and the asio guard latency right here so depending on uh, your configuration within the uh, software that comes with your device, you can set a buffer size in samples. So if I select the, sl uh, the smallest sample buffer, I will have a much lower latency in the input and the output. It also affects the ASIO guard latency, but I'll speak to that more in a second here. Now I can find somewhere in the middle, which has Thing more typical like 15 to 20 milliseconds or you can go all the way up to which counts for like 50 milliseconds input and 55 output now Cubase has a specific thing right here this adjust for record latency when you have this selected it really doesn't matter at all what latency you have in the input output or the as guard uh, latency because it is adjusting for all of those latencies so even though you have all of this uh, defined and calculated latency whenever you have playback and you're going to be recording to that playback with all this high latency you are going still to still be in real time with what's going on it's still going to be recording in real time, you're going to be uh, monitoring and hearing as if you're recording to everything in real time. Um, that's kind of just an added benefit of using Cubase because they have this um, kind of option within the ASIO system. Um, now with other DAWs, I'm not sure if you can do that. Um, so in other DAWs, or if you have this deselected, um, you will notice these 50 to 55 to 92 milliseconds of latency. Meaning, when you have all this, these tracks kind of laid out in Cubase, and you're going to be recording new tracks, you're uh, overdubbing, you are going to be playing back to stuff that is wrought with all, all kinds of latency and then what you're recording to is going to be yeah and it's it's just a mess so you're going to want to keep that in mind um and i always keep this activated because that allows me to have the larger buffer size while still having a real-time kind of recording uh thing going on and the higher the buffer size the more uh time there is for your computer and everything to do all the necessary processing. So if you have, let's say, 10 plugins currently on your pro on your project and you're recording with a really large buffer size, you'll have no problems whatsoever. With a really low buffer size, 10 plugins may be too much. And as you're trying to record, you'll hear clicks and pops and it'll cut in and out from its connectivity because there's not enough latency for the entire system to be processed thoroughly. So yeah, that's a really long winded response to latency, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense and is clarified. Uh, you also have 
the uh, the sample rate is displayed here so whatever your project sample rate is it's going to be displayed here if you change it within your software like here it'll be changed here um, now the Azure Guard what that does is it it adds more latency to the entire system but what that does is it it's creating more time for the entire ASIO system to make sure that it's not going to cut out. So it's going to be preventing any kind of dropouts, um, those kinds of things. That's highly valuable because if you're recording a take from an artist who just, like, let's say, they just happen to be taking the take, the one that you want to keep, and your computer screws up, that really sucks <laughs> trust me so you want to have this on because it's going to prevent that um, by creating the extra latency um, yeah I think that kind of covers the basic stuff here um, now whichever you, uh, VST audio driver that you're selecting has its own configuration so this control panel will open up your particular software that is related to the driver. So it opens up this uh, UR22 software where I can make the necessary uh, configurations. Um, there's also the clocking source um, selection. So if you wanted to externally clock and not have Cubase and your hardware device make all the changes in, in uh, sample rates, etc., etc. If you want an external clock source, this is where you would be selecting. So in my particular case, I do not have the option under this window to pick between clock sources. I believe I can still have an external clock source and tick it with the option here. And that way, Cubase is not going to make changes and the hardware is not going to make changes because I would want to have a specific sample rate externally clocked by an external clocking device. Um, I haven't actually used this, so I don't know exactly how the stuff works here. This direct monitoring, same thing. I have not used this, but it has something to do with whether your hardware has direct monitoring on it or not and that's all i can say about it <laughs> um also your inputs and outputs are going to be dis displayed here so the actual device is going to have specific inputs and outputs and it's going to be labeled right here you can rename it here as to whatever you want so i can name this uh Shweit. And that's going to be input one. Um, yeah, there we go. So now you can also select whether it's going to be visible or not within Cubase. And I'll kind of speak to that a little bit more. So if you're going to go into your VST connections, um, right now it's I have it selected as visible. So I can select under any of these inputs, I can select uh, one or two as the input. If I had it not visible, they would not show up here. They just do not show up. So that is something to keep in mind. In particular, when I'm using my Sapphire Pro 40, there are ADAT connections, A-D-A-T, is what it's, um, the, whatever it is, the short form. Um, I have never used any of that and I don't have any devices that use ADAT so I just take the visibility off so that when I am configuring my uh, VST connections they're not all dropped down here it takes up too much space and un it's uh, unnecessary so I take that off um, yeah that I think that covers all of that now also because I'm opening up this device here if you had the uh, other UR devices that have the DSP, when you click this control panel, it would be opening up this software, not 
this one. So when you click this, you would be opening up the DSP software. So in just to kind of speak to this, you have multiple kind of things here. You have this mixer window and you have this settings window and then this kind of information help thing, I think it is. So depending on which window you're on, if you're in the mixer uh, mode, you have different options here for each channel. So analog one, two, three, four, uh, and also five and six. I believe these are, hmm. Okay, well I know these four are inputs and you can select phantom power, I believe. Either you can select it on the software or when you switch it on the hardware device, it reflects it on the software. Not entirely sure, but you can also pan it um, you can change the level here. You can change whether there's a channel strip on it or not. You can power it on and off, and then you can open it and put different uh, DSP effects on there. Um, there's also high pass filters for each input. Um, there, you can revert the phase, all kinds of different things here within the software, and it translates it and reflects it within the, the hardware device. And the vice versa, if you change it on the hardware device, it's going to be reflected on the software. You can also link to input sources to make it a stereo input. And same goes with the output sources. Um, yeah, and then there's different monitoring options. You got your headphones selections here. Uh, and you have two separate mixes that you can make. If you have the other hardware devices, the other URs, there are more inputs and outputs depending on what you have. And there are also also different configurations and whatnot. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so, and also in this settings, you can set what this high pass filter is going to be. You can set it at 80 Hertz or something else. So that's cool to know. Um, Next, I think we have all of this stuff covered. Next would be actually setting up the VST connections here in Cubase.